Not to have to worry about it. You want your client to be released. Um, I have an agreement I do. And it's a legal agreement and you guys aren't allowed to do it because you can't practice law, but I can. So I have a legal agreement that that will protect your client and uh, but it's not a it's not a form or anything. And so I want to go through a few of the ones I have so that you can see in ways that they've been used so that you can see, well, if I had that, I could use something like this. So I am going, I don't know where it's going to show up or what screen is going to come on. That's the weird part. Um, okay, hold on. Okay, let's go to this. Um, okay, and now let's go back to this. And then let's go back to share my screen. Okay. Right. Okay, so. Your volume is on. Can you see that? Yeah. Can everyone see this? Yes. Yes. I just want to be. Yes. I'm a little goofy. Okay. So this is one form of the of what I call a disclosure and release, and we're we're gonna go through the whole form this oh the whole form this time, but then we'll just go then the rest of them we'll just look at what's different. Okay. So we have a, a disclosure and release agreement. It includes disclosures for the property known as the address. A release entered into, and it could be the seller versus the buyer, doesn't matter which way it is, by buyer to release seller and full release services. Okay, so everyone's getting a release here. Okay, then we tell, then we give the facts and what, what's going on in the next paragraph. Buyer has entered into a residential purchase agreement for the purchase of the property. Buyer is aware and understands that item 17 on the preliminary title report provided by First American states that First American title is not able to verify that the property is compliant with the Subdivision Map Act. Okay, I don't know, not, not actually sure what exactly that means, but again, we don't want our buyer to come back and say, if you're the seller, you don't want the buyer to come back and say, wait a minute, you didn't do this and no one told me, even though they have a copy obviously of the prelim. So we decided to put it in writing and have them release us. Right. So that's all we did was we put in writing that this was the case. And then down here, when we do the release, we release a quit forever discharge seller broker and broker above is defined as the broker and the agent. So you're, both people are defined as broker together. So the agent is also covered. Is this on every transaction? No, this is just when you might need it. That's why we're going to go through a bunch of situations where we've used it and see if any of those in the future, if you have one of those, you might use this. But again, it's different. Like in this in this case, someone was really worried about this thing with the MAP Act. So that's what they wanted. They wanted to release. They wanted to make sure the buyer understood it and the buyer saw it and they did not want to take any chances. So we do a release. We release everybody and everything Um on account of or in any way arising out of or relating to item 17 on the title report. Okay. So now if anything comes up with that, our seller is protected and so are we. Um, we always add this the, the because the law has a bunch of things that they like you to add. The agreement shall be deemed prepared jointly by the parties so that if it's, it's unclear, um, if it's unclear, it's not going to be construed against us because we drafted it. That's what you have to put in. Um, uh, state of California, if it becomes necessary to enforce, the prevailing party gets attorney's fees. By signing this document, the undersigned are each confirming that they have, that they are in agreement with its contents and have carefully read the foregoing and having the opportunity to receive full legal advice as to their rights. Okay, so that's what we give them and then we ask them to sign it. Okay, so this is just one example, something that came up on the title report. It's kind of uh, uh, an odd example, but it could be anything that came up on any report that you want to distance the seller from. Okay. Um, let's go to this one. I think I did that wrong before. Okay. So here's another one. Same, everything is normally the same on these disclosure and releases. But in this one, buyer entered into a purchase agreement. Again, buyer has a delay on the close of escrow and requested an extension to close escrow. Seller would agree, except that seller has committed 
to purchase a property that needs some of the sale proceeds to complete the purchase. Buyer's delay will cause seller to potentially lose seller's replacement property. See, we set it all out. There's no reason not to have make sure everyone's on the same page with the facts. Seller has requested that buyer release $200,000 of the purchase price in an early release before the close of escrow in exchange for a later escrow closing date. Wow, right? So this is worth documenting, right? If we're going to, if our seller is going to say, yeah, I'll release, I mean, if the buyer is going to say, I'll release 200,000, I want to, I want to know that the buyer's releasing us from depending on that, you know, that they're not going to come back and say, we weren't advised, we were whatever. So then, so first we usually do, sometimes they're the same, but first we do the facts, then we do the agreement. Buyer agrees to release 200000 to seller prior to the close of escrow. Buyer understands that once the money is released from escrow, escrow shall have no responsibility to buyer for the 200000 except a credit buyer with that amount towards the purchase price. If the transaction is canceled by either party for any reason, escrow will not be able to return the $200,000 to buyer. Buyer understands that buyer could lose the money. So this is good, right? I mean, if we don't want to get sued when all this comes down, and so we want to protect ourselves. So this was also a, a really good instance. And then when you get down to the release, we're releasing just anything relating to the buyer's early release of 200000 These are partial releases. They're not complete releases. They're only releasing what was the issue that we talked about. Not everything and anything, but you'll see we get somewhere the releases are a little bit bigger. Um, okay, so this one would this so you can see this would be an important thing to call um, call me and say, hey, we're releasing two hundred thousand. Let's get something in writing saying no one's going to sue us. Um, okay, another one, kind of the same. In this one, there were there was one seller and two different buyers buying the two pieces. Okay. So there was lot 60 and lot 50 and two different buyers were buying them. So again, they've entered into a, a purchase agreement, the well, and then, and, and, the, oh, and they share a well. That's what we're disclosing. We want you to, in writing, both of you, they just, they share a well. Don't come back later and say, you didn't know you shared the well. And then it talks about the well, whatever information that I was given. And then um, when you look at the release, it releases us in defending and kind of anywhere rising out of or relating to anything to do with the well, including but not limited to ownership, use, costs, and repairs. We're out. Now, when the two of them fight about the well, we are out of the fight. Okay, we represent the sellers. Um, so anyway, that's again, as you can see, these aren't these don't come up in every transaction, but when they come up, you need to be prepared to protect your client. Um, okay, here's another one. Oh, and this one could be any city that requires a pre-sale inspection report. Okay, they've entered into a purchase agreement. Buyer is aware that the city of Southgate requires a pre-sale inspection and then remediation of all issues in the report. Buyer has received and read a copy of the report. The report requires immediate work on the property. Buyer agrees to be responsible for all work required to the pursuant to the Southgate report to be completed in the time frame and under the term set forth by the city of Southgate. Sellers shall have no liability for any issue in the report. Okay, so if you're gonna give the onus, and some of these cities have a form you can fill out as well, but if you're gonna give the onus on the pre-sale inspection report to the buyer or to the repairs to the buyer, then let's have an agreement. Let's make sure that we're gonna be released and we're not gonna be responsible for anything on that report, our seller, right? Not responsible because you've agreed to do this. So you're releasing us. And, you know, these releases, they're only so as good as the person who gives it, because if someone gives you a release and then doesn't and then something happens and, and you get sued anyway, um, you know, they're only as good as whatever that person has nothing. You can't collect anything. So unfortunately, we always look at the deep pocket because we have insurance. OK, let's do another one. OK. Okay, this one's for entry. Seller shall allow buyer, but seller shall allow buyer. Okay, oh wait, no. oh, I, we're not doing that. Those. Okay, so, shall, seller shall allow buyer to enter and be on the property for the sole purpose of making the repairs required by buyer's lender, which consists solely of repairing the electrical and exposed wires for the AC unit thermostat. Okay, 
That's it. We're very specific. If we're going to say you can come on to do repairs, we have to be specific about the type of repairs. Because the last thing we want to do is have this buyer come on with his handyman or his, his contractor and start fixing things we didn't agree to or changing things. We don't, you know, I mean, yeah, if they make it better, that not that great? But still, um, who knows what they'll do. So very specific. So if you say, hey, they're going in early to do repairs, you got to tell me exactly what repairs have to be done so that we can be specific. Okay, once buyer begins the repairs, buyer shall complete the repairs, whether or not the parties are still in escrow or have canceled the escrow. So buyer, once you start, you can't leave the hole in the wall and cancel escrow. Buyer shall have the sole and exclusive responsibility to pay for all the repairs prior to the close of escrow. Buyer shall provide seller with proof of payment prior to the close of escrow. Let's hope that seller remembers to ask for the proof of payment. Um, and then buyer shall not make any changes to the property prior to the close of escrow, which are not included in the repairs above. So there's nothing else. You can't do anything else. And then, okay, so now we're releasing the seller. And buyer invitees performance anywhere on property, but not limited to repairs. Yeah, on the property. Oh, buyer. oh, yeah. So now we're releasing them from performance of any work on the property, including but not limited to the repairs. So if they do something else, doesn't matter, it's included. Presence on the property prior to the close of escrow for the purposes of cleaning the completing the repairs and anything that happens on the property when the buyer and their invitees are on the bot on the pro on there. So they're releasing the seller from all of these things that have to do with the issue, right? It's not a release of seller for everything and anything. And the, you know, it's just the ones that have to do with the issue. Cause that's, what's going to hold up. Okay. Let's do another one. Okay. Some of them I change and I call agreement and release. And even those have changed. I think the next one looks a lot different than this. Um, and that, and usually I changed it from disclosure to agreement when we are agreeing on something and not just disclosing something. Um, okay, so I've seen a couple of these. Um, I have a couple of these. So buyer has asked seller to pay for repairs and buyer and seller now agree on a final credit for repairs. Seller shall provide buyer with a check for 2000 payable to so-and-so um, and then escrow is to release it when the work is complete. How is escrow supposed to know when it's complete? I don't know. Sometimes when I look at look back at these, I think, oh, I could have added that. Um, and again, because we're doing a check for repairs, we are having the buyer release us from anything arising out of or relating to the condition of the property. We are going to give you this, but after that, you are accepting this property. Okay, it doesn't mean mean you have to do this every time this comes up, but you you know you get a feel for buyers and who they are and what they are, and sometimes you feel like you need to have a release. Okay. Um, okay. The, yeah, this is my new form of the agreement and release. We do it like a real doc, like a real agreement. Okay. Oh, usually I take the names out. Sorry. Okay. Buyer and seller or an escrow buyer. Okay. We'll skip down to here. Buyer shall, as long as this agreement is executed by all parties, be entitled to go on the property after August 8th solely to leave buyer's personal property in storage on the property. As long as buyer's agent is on the property to let buyer in and to lock up after buyer leaves. So that was the condition as we don't want you there without your agent. So your agent has to be with you, but you can come on and you can leave personal property. Okay, what I realize is not in here because we just have this um, huge um, amount of correspondence and going back and forth on one that we just got where um, the lender required certain appliances that weren't in the property. The property was vacant. The lender required certain um, appliances. The buyer agreed to put them in and put them in before the close of escrow. And then the buyer defaulted. And we canceled the escrow and we have brand new, not, not a bunch, but I think it was one or two um, brand new appliances that the buyer paid for. Well, the buyer wants their appliances back. Right. And um, the seller, the seller, it turns out the seller doesn't care. He's going to give them back. But we weren't sure of that for a while. So there was quite a bit of back and forth. And so now I know that we have to be very careful in these agreements. I have to be very careful to make sure that if someone's dropping off stuff that it says what happens if we don't close, which in the future I will do. Um, 
because if you don't, if you don't, I, I've never seen anyone come do work on the property and then not close, or I've never heard of it, but that's what happened here. But anyway, they're going to give the appliances back. Um, not a problem. Okay. And people ask, is this recommended? Do you recommend that we let people in early to leave stuff in storage or to make repairs or whatever it is? And and actually we have one, I didn't come across one when I was looking for today, but we have one that's actually move in, that you can actually move in the property to. So buyer wants, buyer, you know, didn't, we didn't close Friday, but buyer has to be out of his, out of his apartment on Saturday. And, you know, all the funds are in and we're closing Monday and seller says, sure, buyer, you can move in on Saturday. Um, and then I, we would do one of these, same thing for a move in. Okay. I think this is my last one. And can you make this big? Oh, oh first you have to do this. Huh? Control all and then make it bigger. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Oh, this is another one. This is not the one I thought was last. Okay, maybe it's the next one. Okay, so this is an agreement for credit and release agreement. So we, I, I was more specific. So buyer entered into a purchase agreement. Oh, they all start the same, right? Buyer has done all of the investigations and buyer is aware and understands that the property requires repairs, which seller is not required to repair or pay for. However, citing the disclosures, termite report and physical inspection, buyer has requested that seller credit buyer and escrow based on the condition of the property. And they came to an agreement. So as long as buyer's broker executes the CVC to reduce broker's commission, seller shall credit buyer 4,000 at the close of escrow. And then our release is relating in any way to the condition of the property, because that's what this agreement was, is we're going to give you this and we're done. So um, just another another way to, to use this agreement. Okay. The last one I want to go over is a settlement agreement and release. Let me make this bigger. Okay. And this is different. This is not, this is if you have a dispute, your buyer and seller have a dispute that they settle after the close of escrow. During the close of escrow, we would probably do one of those other agreements. But after, um, or, you know, somehow you get in, somebody gets into a dispute, we can do a settlement and release of claims. And you'll see this is a really short one. The only thing I took off the bottom was the was the signatures. Um, and so we could do a short one because usually these aren't like 3,000. Usually they're not big deals, but by the same token, nobody wants to pay money without an agreement, right? Um, after the close of escrow, buyer discovered a leak in the shower pan in the master bathroom. Seller had no knowledge of the leak, so it was not disclosed. In exchange for a release of all claims against seller, seller has agreed to reimburse buyer 3000 to resolve all issues relating to the property. So, gee, we don't think we have any responsibility, but to avoid this, we're going to pay $3,000, but we want to be done. We want to be done, right? Once the agreement is executed by all parties, seller shall, within three business days, mail a check to buyer for $3,000. Buyer releases and acquits, acquits seller and all of everybody and everybody in the world in any way arising or related to the sale of the property or the property. So now we're over. And we're giving more money after the close of escrow. So this is it. This is our last time. The only thing we know about buyer is relating to the sale of the property. Because sometimes I'll put at the end, the sale of the property or the property or all matters between the parties from the beginning of time. But as far as we know, the only matter they have is the property. So we're not going to get carried away. Um, and then these are all the boilerplate. Um, if somebody files suit to interpret this agreement, uh, they get attorney's fees if they win. California law, just the usual stuff. And, and always ends with the parties are advised to consult with an attorney. Um, so again, if you have some sort of dispute, I've done quite a few of these. Some are longer than this because they take more recitation of facts. But um, if you need some sort of, uh, like, again, not, not if you're an escrow. If you're an escrow, we'll do an agreement and release. We'll do one of those kind of things. But if you're not an escrow, and people have a little problem, you know, I, I've used these for, you know, fender benders and car accidents and things where people are settling outside of whatever. 
So um, anyway, just know that I have this and that we we can tweak it and you know prepare it in any way that you need it. Okay, now let's do stop sharing. Now let's do questions. Does anyone have questions? Harry. Yay. Yeah, I just have a question. Um, so your thought on these agreements and things, these these are things that kind of go above and beyond like the pre-occupancy storage addendum or the seller's response to the repair request or things like that. So Right, because those don't have releases in them. If we're going to do something and we want to release, we're going to only doing this because I know I don't have to do it again. I don't have any problem. I, no one's going to yell at me. That That's where it goes beyond that. Just because Okay, so, so if I wrote up a three occupancy storage agreement, then I would use one of these. In I, yeah, I that. used to. I don't so much anymore because, well, for reasons. But I used to all, right, recommend that people use the, the early occupancy agreement with it. But I don't think it's 100% necessary. I think that we say what we need to say in the agreement, but it can never hurt to use also both of them. But it's not gonna it's not gonna have as good of a release as what we have. Okay. I think it does have a release, but I don't think it's quite drawn out. Yeah, it does, but it's not as yeah. it's certainly yeah. not as extensive. That's what I thought. Yeah, I think I thought it did too. Um, so I don't know, unless you have a different opinion, I certainly No, I, I don't have an opinion. I just hadn't seen these before because well, that's because they're, they're just mine. Because they're yours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so which is why I'm as, sharing as them I because was, most people yeah, unless as they, I was looking at them, they were all new to me too. So so yeah, and if anybody saw one of theirs up there, I tried to take the names off so no one would know it was yours. But oh, I know well, there you go. Um, okay. So, but anyway, so if you need something like that, you know, we can put that together. In fact, I have one to do right after this class um, for the Scalia team because um, I can't remember why anymore, but I have it written down. Um, so anyway, if you need one of those, what all I need really, as long as your stuff is in Skyslope, all I need is your property address and a really good description of what is going to be done, what you know, what the issue is that we're going to get a release from. What what do we want, or that we just what do we want to disclose? What do we want to whatever. So anyway, I recommend it because I think that it protects us. I've only, I only think once in all my years had um, somebody refuse to sign it. What we get more often is we get where we have the buyer and the seller wants us to prepare the release. Yeah, we'll let them move in if you give us a release. Well, I'm sorry, but why would I want to prepare a good release for you? But I do because we want our buyers to get what they want. So we do it either way, but I, I don't like doing it for the other side because it just seems not nice. Okay, anyone else have questions Any about possibilities? Anything else that they might wonder what we could do with a legal document like that? Anything? Oh, Cindy. Yeah. Hi, I so if we, hi. So if we're representing seller and we are asking to the buyer to sign this, it's only if they have really, if the buyers have removed all contingencies, correct? Is it dependent on that? No, because no. I mean, obviously they could still can't write. They, uh, as a matter of fact, one of these, I one of these that was in there was one that I prepared that the transaction ended up getting canceled after it was signed. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because but, if they're coming into the house and doing repairs, right? Well, yeah. Well, usually, right. If 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 it's for repairs, usually you know. But sometimes people know right away that they want to come in. It's it's really weird, but people will sign the agreement and then say, hey, you know, before escrow, I want to change out all the, well, during escrow, I want to change out all the appliances. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know why you would do that during escrow, not the day after, but if you want to, and then, you know, we would put an agreement. The other thing when I was reviewing these for you guys, I realized that what I don't have in my agreement and what I will in the future is something saying what happens if we don't close escrow, right? That's right. That's what happens right. if so, you drop your stuff off and we don't close escrow? You know, how long do you have to get it? You know, just, it's not going to be extensive, but we need to have a, we always need to have that in there. And I see that it's not, it's, some of them it is, but some of them it's not. But practically speaking, we need, um, if we represent sellers, it's only good to have this signed 
after the buyers have removed escrow or? Well, I mean, it, it depends on what the, yeah, for, for something. Uh, have you moved for sure or something, I mean. something like moving in or, or, you know, anything where they're going on the property. But sometimes you might just have a disclosure that you want to do. And you and that doesn't have to wait for the contingencies to be removed. You just want to disclose right away that there's a well and two people are sharing it, right? It nothing to do with contingencies. But yes, I would never let a buyer come on the property and do anything till all the contingencies are removed. Correct. Especially this release document. And you can okay. make the agreement ahead of time and you can say that the buyer may do this after contingencies are removed. But yes, I agree mm -hmm. with you on those. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Sheesh. Um, anyway, I talk about this, these agreements, and no one's ever seen, and a lot of people are like, what are you talking about? So now you can see that if you need something, it doesn't have to be one of these. It could be something completely different, but because I am a licensed attorney, I can prepare them. And where if, you know, if you guys try to prepare them, sometimes it looks like you're trying to practice law and it could be a problem. So. Um, so if you have anything that I can do specially, then send it my way. Okay, I'm early, but no one has any more questions? No? Great. Thank you. Well, thank you. I don't... If I'm thank done, you. I'm done, I'm done. Thank you, Cindy. Thank, thank you, Cindy. You. Okay, bye, guys. Bye. Bye. I just want everybody to know I was taking really, really great notes there. And there's going to be a homework assignment on this later. It's not, it's not going to be any of that. I'm just glad Cindy, I'm just glad Cindy's around to take care of this stuff. All right, everybody.